Thank you all for coming. Let's just take a moment and remember why we're here and for those that care to join us. Let's just shift our attention inwards and shut down all the outside stimuli, all the doing and seeing and, and everything that comes from the outside. We just want to take a moment and just pay attention to what's happening inside. Pay attention to the way we're feeling right now. Remembering why we're here. So anything that happened before we got here today, we can just leave that outside the door just for this one hour. We can just be here now. We can stay focused. We can be present. And we can just give ourselves this gift. Spirit. Now, the reason why we're here to grow and to learn as humans, to evolve, to assimilate new information and ways of being and to let go of any old programming that's no longer serving us. And we're grateful for those that have come before us, for the ones that are here working beside of us, uh, always helping us even though we can't see them or we, we don't always know that they're there we, we understand that they're here to help us to inspire us guide us and motivate us and we're we're grateful for that assistance oh, no. and so with that we ask for permission to begin our work tonight so be it so let me go ahead and do my share with everybody. So I, I missed you guys last week, <laughs> um, but we had a good conversation here. So we're still on chapter two of what is spiritism. Um, and the chapter is elementary notions of spiritism. So we're kind of like in the, the meat and potatoes of spiritism. been kind of just going through and discussing topics and like we always did and um, in no hurry really to get through it. There we go. All right, we're sharing. Going through and discussing. That sounds like my voice. So, um, so last week, I think we actually started the second section called Concerning Spirits mm -hmm. and we got all the way through, I, was, I said we we're going to start again on item 14. Um, so, I mean, last week we were talking about uh, life after death, um, what is the makeup of spirits, what is a spirit, you know, versus a spirit or a soul, like, you know, and I think that's actually where we sort of pick up this week, and, and uh, you know, item 11, 12, and 13, we're talking about um, death, and how it's not like a, I want to say a death sentence. <laughs> It's not like a, it's death not being the end. I like that one. You know, it's, it's pretty. It's an elevated thought. But, uh, but how death is really a process, um, like a like a snake, you know, shedding its skin, like a a fruit rooting itself of its husk. It says, um, and then you know, just part of the, the natural process. Continuation of life. Something that's, like that. that's the word I like. It is a continuation of life. It's kind of like, you know, like our birthday, you know, which one of us is celebrating this week. Um, I'm older than you. You, you better <laughs> respect. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, 
and and even like being born is really the the continuation of this you know the spirit journey. I, I'm uh, sorry, I'm making me think of something I saw on TV. I don't want to bring it up. <laughs> spirit journey formation anniversary, but um, <laughs> I'll tell you guys later. Would you say that death is the the biggest taboo of this country of this culture? Would you say funeral services will be out of business if there was a rebirth? It's like everyone goes through grief and they're sad, but in reality, they're free. So true. Yeah, um, there was one of my like guided meditations. Um, the guy was doing a talk about um, death, and he said how funny it is because he lived. He lived in I don't know if he lived in India or he where he lived, but for. A number of years and he got used to that culture and came back to the US and um, he was talking about how funny it was where in the US it's like when somebody dies we put makeup on them and we dress them up and it's like he's like it's almost like they're going to a party mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but he said where, where he was like the um, you know they, they would have flowers and do things like that but like they had more acceptance that like well this person is, is dead <laughs> you know it's not like um, not like trying to make it like in something that's not so it, it, I think like um, and I, I was watching one time that show um, Six Feet Under I never watched the whole like series but I watched like the first season of it one time and, and it was like some people that owned a funeral home and it probably talked a little about medium shit in that show in sort of a like a, a secular sort of way and <laughs> and uh, they were like at a funeral and they had like because they own a funeral home they had all these like accessories that they would sort of sell to the people but in this case it was that that family that owned the funeral home was our own father that died so when they brought out all this stuff like they had like you know like some people like to sprinkle dirt on the coffin and he had like a salt and pepper shaker full of dirt that he would, and, and the guy's like come on like get rid of this stuff <laughs> he's like i want to feel the dirt in my hand and, and do it like for real like, i don't want all this like uh sterile you know stuff <laughs> you know. but that was totally off topic <laughs> but you know i mean there, there is a lot of um um we try to make death into something it's it's not and we sort of try to you know we're, we're afraid of it i think even spiritists um like when, when i've had people in the center tell me like they've had a family member that died it, like I don't think it's a good time to like preach spiritism to people to tell them like well don't worry they're coming back and then just you know like you've got nothing to be sad about you know it's like it's I, I think it's a bad time you know so it's like if they if they want to cry about it or grieve it's like I, I feel like you should let them but I mean it is comforting knowing that like <laughs> death isn't the end but it's still sad like because um this material life feels yeah. to us like like it's final it has that feeling to it for some people the death is a punishment like a death death of a loved one or a child or you know. so I don't want to say it's the same thing but um, it is sad when you have to part ways with somebody that maybe is moving to another country or you are or and you know uh, you really you're really fond of that person, but you know you're not going to see them probably again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you probably won't see them physically. Yeah, and yeah. I was going to say, and today we do have means of communicating, mm -hmm. but I'm saying this because I did have this feeling more than once you know, years ago. Uh, and I used to move from country to country, and um, I, you know, I got that emotion of, wow. I'm saying goodbye if I go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we should have a Facebook for spirits so we can keep in touch with them. You know, <laughs> right. Like an app on the we phone. do. We at Browse Spirit Society is working on creating our own app. I, I heard. You know, keep it on the download. But it's it's um, <laughs> it's coming. So that might be a feature we could talk about. <laughs> right. <I'm> just saying. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. 
knows? It's not out of the realm of uh, possibilities. No. Yeah, what's what's going on in Brazil now? It is something really amazing. The uh, that's what the the legacy of the spiritism in, in Brazil. There are mediums. There are wonderful mediums doing uh, doing this. Uh, communication and giving to people. There is one medium in particular uh, other than the little details that only the family would know or only the person that is there to get their message, the, the written message, channel message would know. This guy, he is so good that the dead person gives the their social security number and their driver's license ID number equivalent in Brazil so what he usually wherever he goes wherever those mediums goes they have this room packed with people and and that's it and the medium don't know knows nothing about it and all of a sudden says a name like for example, Cynthia Cavalcanti, and then someone starts crying. So they come, and the the medium uh, reads the message. But the, they are doing a wonderful job in bringing consolation and peace of mind to these people. In in it doesn't matter where they come from, if they believe, if they do not believe. They are open to everyone. This is an amazing thing that they're doing, and it's bringing a lot of um, uh, consolation to to a lot of people. It's amazing you, when you watch one of those videos. It's impossible not to be touched or not to cry because it is so beautiful. The message is so rich. Like, mom, I didn't die, mom, or you know, I. I tell this person I didn't die I'm here what happened that day they give all the details and it and that's the reason why we so passionate so passionately talk about spiritism here in the States because of what we see today what's going on in Brazil that people are getting used to the idea that people don't die it's just a continuation of life and it's not the end and we don't have to, to be desperate about the death but this is a this is just part of our spiritual path and education right I guess but it would be what we see in Brazil it is so wonderful so wonderful we wish uh, that uh, you guys would have the same here Edgar Casey was wonderful and there are few mediums but not like Edgar Casey not like him he was amazing his ability to see people's disease and to help them to heal and it was amazing we just we dream the day that people will open their minds and be more open for this I mean it's good because I mean, I, I, before I even found Spiritism, I met um, somebody through my Tai Chi class that was um, part of the Edgar Casey Foundation. I don't know exactly what it was called. It but, is. But Edgar Casey Foundation. I don't know, you know, but, but, um, so she was like very involved in that. So she was telling me about it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but it's great that, um, that these messages are coming out from different avenues and they're going to reach, yeah. you know, people uh, you know one yes. way or another yeah you know we, we get it one way or another we get to yeah and it's all depend on us to sit down the way that we are sitting down here and but being uh, really responsible for for this knowledge and what I see I don't know maybe I'm getting out of the topic but what I see is that people see they know they are so like elevated in uh, so many topics and technology and so many things they're so advanced but if we talk about basic things life and death 
People were like, oh, no, 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 no. They don't even want to talk about it. How we are going to get out of this cycle of there is only one life, only one body. How? If we do not discuss this, if we do not uh, try to talk, what is the reason why I'm so afraid to talk about this? Uh, or... I want to say something. Sure. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. No, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> to me, the big value, you know, of spiritism, for me, the big value is that it has detached me from my attachment to this body, to this life. I know when my wife passed away three years ago, for the first, you know, I, I had been around death for, my age has been around a long time, but the attachment that I had for her was like part of me got ripped away. And I I became aware of how I am attached to this life. And we we I mean the reason we're so afraid to talk about death is because we're gonna get you know, we're gonna lose this attachment to life, to this body. And to let go of of the attachment to this body. It's been an enormous value to me, and it, and it has really happened to studying spiritism. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was skeptical like everybody else, even though I'm very spiritual. But, but the attachment to the idea of what life is, you know, and then, and then when I let that go, my God, it, it's just an amazing experience. So it is. This is the big value of spiritism to me helps us get rid of the one big attachment that we have to this body. And yeah, material, materialism, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And we're, we're attached to so many material things. Mm. But this body is the, yeah. is the essence of yeah. materialism. It's mm. like our soul is like bonded to it. Right, right. right. And you, you are so right. The spirits, Andrea Louise talks about the word I was saying to you. I was like, Steve, is this word, does this word exist in English? Adherence, adherence. What is the word? Adherence. Sure. That the our multiple existence will uh, allow, will give us the ability to lose the adherence to our body, to the material life. And the suffering is because of exactly what you have said. The suffering is because we are attached. And when we are attached, if it's something, if I'm attached to this chair, if something happened to this chair, I am going to suffer. Nothing, nothing can happen to this chair, otherwise I'm not going to be myself, it's a projection. But the multiple existences will help us to understand that we are not that body. I was exposed to education many, many years ago, I read his stuff, and I, you know, I even use some of his ideas, you know, in my practice. The, but it seems to me that he doesn't, he didn't promote spiritism. And people reading his books, it, it, it didn't do anything for me as far as uh, what I, the way I feel now about being detached right. from, from the material. Uh, right, right, right. right. Yeah. So, it, it, so this is the value. This is the value, and mm -hmm. how we can uh, show other people, uh, I, I don't know. I, all right. I know is that it's making me a very wonderful human being. I'm very, very generous in that now, and charity has become part of my life, and it's a, uh, I, I see and feel its value, and uh, things that I've learned from the, just in the short time since last November, it's almost a year, I guess. Has really, really substantially made me a happy man. That's wonderful to hear. Also, because you said about the chair or you know material things, but all of those material attachments are in relation to our body, because anything material that we're attached to, it's it's to serve our body. Uh, without this body, anything material has has any sense. And, and of course we don't realize that you know when we die we leave everything behind but that is because 
I think it's because of what you said. We don't realize that the first thing we're going to leave behind is the body. And, yeah. and then, you know, with that goes everything else. Right. One, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about this week was um, just what Jesus meant when he said, you have to be born again in order to get to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I always had an idea, I think most people have the same idea, you know, you're born again when you give up materialism and you become spiritual, you know, it's, it's, it's like a different change in your life. Well, I had that change a long time ago, but then I, and I accepted Jesus' words that you have to be born again to enter the kingdom, and I do feel very happy. But I think it was much more than that. Now I believe that he was talking about, he was a spiritist. And he said, no, you're going to be born again. You're going to, another woman shall bear me, as Keller uh, Gibran said. That this is being born again. This is the opportunity to get rid of the, uh, the hang-ups that we yeah. had uh, from our previous life or two. And yeah. it's part of our ascension to heaven. Yeah. The opportunity to live again and get rid of some of the stuff from our past existences. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I really believe that this yeah. is the, that Jesus was a spiritist. Yeah. 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 That's all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. Um, what I don't, I are you? I mean, we're still kind of on a fourteen. I mean, oh, okay. what we're talking about really is in relation to that, because um, we're talking about the union of the soul, para spirit, and physical right. body right. being the human, making the human being. Right. Um, so I mean, and this is this is just kind of like it's kind of like boring technical stuff. It's important, but um, right. It's it's where it, it's and this has come up a lot. Where Alan Kardec says, "What's the difference between a soul and a spirit?" Um, and and as we're talking mm. about it, there's there's not really a difference per se. It's mm. not like they're two separate things. Right. But the the only difference is that the soul is the intelligent principle, mm -hmm. and that uh, the spirit is basically the soul mixed with the para spirit. You know. I, so I, I, I think it was just the opposite that the uh, the, soul, that the spirit is. Uh, contains the soul so it's, 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 there's two parts to it yeah no the, the soul has one is single spirit plus uh plus uh peri spirit is soul and uh that's with spirit. the body with the body it, it, it's, uh, there's three parts it's the human yeah, yeah. well i mean that's that's what actually it, that's I, it says I got that mixed up too because it, it, it was saying like you know he says the term soul and spirit are usually employed interchangeably um but um, the soul is the simple being. The spirit is a twofold being, um, being the, the soul with the para spirit, and the human being a threefold being. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So, I mean, it just it's like kind of one of those things. If you hear somebody talking, like, in, and you've read this, you know, then you, you, you like kind of like cringe when they when they say it if they say it wrong. But I, I have that problem, you know. What, what, but I just have to kind of like, you know get over it <laughs> Absolutely. Know? but but so, I used to be like that too. I mean he, he just says like when we're talking about it that the two terms can be used interchangeably right but philosophically he says it is essential to different, right. differentiate between them and the reason why it is is like that and he says philosophically it's when you you go deeper in this type of studies you need to have that separation so when you talk about one thing and then there are a lot of things in debt to that and there are a lot of things in debt with the spirit and with the soul and with the very spirit right now right here we are looking from like the whole picture it doesn't make as you said it doesn't make much yeah. difference but what when you go deeper it does yeah i mean i it think makes, i think it makes matters difference. more like when we're talking about um the different orders of spirit right and if we're talking about spirits that are close to perfection, exactly. then, then it might matter more about... Or when you, you were talking about inhabited worlds too, other planets as well. But, um, um, so yeah, so then um, what do we get to next? Spirits clothed with physical bodies comprise humankind or the visible corporeal world. When they are rid of these bodies, they make up the spirit or invisible world. 
Um, they populate the space in the midst of which we live without our ever, without our even suspecting it. Um, just this is I like this analogy. It says just as we used to live in the midst of the world of the infinitesimal without suspecting it before the microscope was invented. So I yeah. I, I kind of like that analogy. It's like when you when you've seen like pictures of actually even like the surface of the skin and all the different like mm. organisms that are actually mm -hmm. like alive on our own body it's really creepy <laughs> you know? yes and, <laughs> and i like what you said because um when i i started my studies on spiritism i used to think there was a separation like here's the material body and then the next is the spiritual and then they would have a separation I used to to think like that, but it's not. It's it's all like all mixed. For all. me, it was easy because I remember like being a kid and playing The Legend of Zelda, and you would go through this door, uh -huh. and you'd be in the same world, but except instead of being like the bright green world, it was like the the dark world. But everything's in the same place. Like the houses were still there, the plants were still there, but they were like they were like dark all of a sudden. You know? Wow! I, I kind of thought so of that. Cool. When, when, Whenever I would like read about the spirit world, it's, it's like it's like in the same like space as ours. It's just like yeah. you know, on a different dimension. Yeah. So if anybody who's played Zelda, like you just get it just no. like that. You know, I did. Stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I, I a mean, video game called. I am not. I don't know this one. <laughs> so that's twenty-five. And years. just to to think that that there are different worlds in this world it is crazy too it is just to stop to think that in a moment and just like we have the fish that lives under the water and the other creatures that live in a different environment and it's all within our own planet and still the majority are not capable to think mm, that might be a spiritual world it is amazing. They don't, even, they don't even think about how the world is as we see it. There's so much about the, everything we can touch and see. We don't even we don't know about how they're gonna think about something they can't see. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, Alan Carter says like, um, if at some given moment the veil hiding them were to be lifted, they would form an entire population around us. Yeah, and, and it happens to a few people. They're not <laughs> aware of of this. And it, it's it's terrible, and then that's when they come to the spiritual center. That's when they come and or the asylum or you know, or the asylum. That's true, but that's usually when they come and they see. Uh, I remember this guy who we were in a study group, just like this one, and he came and he came. He just like imagine someone uh, just passing the door and then coming and then talking. To the people I tried to kill them I I got my gun and I sh shot them but they won't disappear and we were in a study group like this was a night I was like I was in shock and then the lady that was um, uh, teaching us that was a long long time ago she she spoke to him like if he was a spiritist that that, that was a big big lesson in my life she said you cannot kill them with your gun because they are spirits he said yeah that's right I tried to kill them I got my gun and I sh shot them but they did not go away and they won't let me be by myself and then she was talking to him and then well of course we had to stop the whole thing but the guy was really disturbed he was really disturbed but i don't know how she touched that man's heart i don't know how but he he wasn't that you know in the situation we are on the bottom of the well we are really really desperate and we don't know what to do that was his case he was seeing spirits and he had no spiritual any kind of education mm. and it was driving him crazy but he was seeing spirits yeah and he was shooting and the spirits lit his gun was he incarcerated after that no <laughs> i don't think so i, mean, I don't know 
Oh, oh, I don't know. Psych ward. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it depends on the state. It depends on the state. Yeah. Brazil? That happened in Manaus, yeah. Mm. It was in the jungle anyway. So. Yeah, <laughs> probably. They're that's wrong. that's where you were going. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm lucky enough. Don't um, behave. So, um, on from that, we, um, you know, Alan Carr is just talking about how spirits are beside us. And for some people, it's like totally hard to imagine for other people it's like obvious you know yeah some people, i mean I, i've had experience too like just in prayer you know it's it's funny like being at work even like it's like not a very spiritual place you know and and like start praying or something like that and start thinking about somebody like and you just get this like warm feeling like i feel like they're next right next to me you know and it's, mm-hmm. it's not like it's not completely uh um like foreign to us it's, it's just cool. you know when we when we talk about it like with such you know conviction oh, that's i think that's what makes it different for some people you. yeah you know divaldo franco do you know divaldo franco that medium yeah. oh you can come them okay. divaldo franco he says that because he sees spirits and just like i see you here and he says that he got a technique he asks the questions mentally and if that person that he's seeing responds, it's because it's dead. It's the spirit. That's his technique. Who are you talking about? Divaldo Franco is a great medium. He's a Brazilian medium. He's wrote many, many books. He wrote many books and he's amazing uh, speaker. He's amazing. Divaldo I'm, Franco. I'm sure there's at least some of his books in English too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. I Many languages. He can't distinguish and nicely. Sometimes he can't. If he's doing something, if he's working, if if he's channeling, if it's, he get confused. Some people, because he lives in a, they built a town. They take care of so many kids. He uh, adopted kids. Thank you. And uh, there are so many people there working. There is a hospital, and it's all charity. It's it's a town. It's a huge town. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization. So there are so many people that come to see him. And then we, if someone comes to see him, he asks the question mentally. And if the person answers, he knows this person is not in the physical body. He sees like he is confused. Um, he sees like a so as real as a person incarnated. I mean, I do that to people too. To be honest with you, they don't answer back. They don't answer. Yeah, I guess they're all alive. <laughs> so. <laughs> Holy stupid! But well, yeah. that's a great segue in, in <laughs> item seventeen. Because um, this one, this one, I think if you're falling asleep, I think it's about to get interesting. Okay. Um, now, uh, let's just go ahead and read it. Um, in item 17, it says, Spirits retain all the perceptions they had while on Earth, but to a higher degree because their faculties are no longer deadened by matter. They experience sensations unknown to us. I thought that that's interesting. Like, you can't even imagine. Um, <laughs> but they see and hear things that our limited senses do not enable us to see or hear. For them there is no darkness, except for those whose punishment requires them to be in darkness temporarily. All our thoughts, this, this part is where I really, this is where I really dig it. All our thoughts reverberate within them, and they can read them like an open book. Hmm. What, we, what we may be able to hide from a living person cannot be hidden once that person becomes a spirit. Now I ask you, so if I don't think, what happens? Well, they say, think, I think therefore I am. So if you don't think, then you're not. What happens if I don't think? How are you going to function? What happens in, in, what, in what sense? What do you like, mean? how are you going to live? Or? No, I can, but I mean, if I don't think all the time, if I think only when I have to think to plan my life but if I am not like you know like people are non-stop thinking mm-hmm. and they think it's okay and they think all the time so the spirits they are attracting likewise the spirits same kind of energy and vibration and thoughts right but if I don't think 
Are you meditating? I don't think I'm very effective. <laughs> and it's possible not to think. I find that on the golf course. Right? <laughs> Seriously, I don't, I, I, I'm giving him a lesson. I, I keep telling him. Mm -hmm. As soon as you think, you lost. When you stop, wow. when you stop thinking, wow. and you, then, you, then you start experiencing. Is Thought it? interferes with experience. Okay? Are so you connecting to your higher when self? You don't think, you're present. So what, ha what um. happens when you stop thinking is very valuable. That's why meditation is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when we don't think that that's a way to to uh, make those unwanted spirits to give up on us, on us. Yeah. if we you we are not feeding the thought that is disturbing our mind and our body, and they because when we are walking and we are thinking, we are attracting. So it's like we are sending out vibration. So if we stop to send out this vibration of concern, they, they will come, the spirits that will come to, to, uh, um, to suck this vibration, they don't have the source anymore. So you're doing like a mental detox? Yeah, is very effective, especially because the the dense vibration spirits they are not patient at all. They are very very impatient. I mean, what I really wanted to talk about was when we talk about spirits being able to read our thoughts like an open book. Uh huh. And like here on this planet, like people are are hiding things like from each other. Um, uh -huh. I, I mean, before I found spiritism, I was studying Qigong and he was always talking about how to open the third eye. And um, now this is like the Chinese Taoists. They're uh -huh. always talking about the reason that they move out to the mountains is they have a name for the people who are trying to like seek enlightenment. They call them Shenren, which means truthful persons. Because they believe that if you want to like, become enlightened, you can't lie to anybody. Because they say when we start telling lies, we like block our, our third eye. And we're, you know, because uh, by becoming truthful, we also gain the power of telepathy, which is like a ancient Chinese, you know, thing. But I, I found it really interesting when I read about it. And we talk about spirits being able to read the thoughts. Um, it it kind of makes you wonder, Here's like. What I found on the web for a spell, read the thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes you wonder, like I, I just kind of wanted to ask you guys, like, uh, what are you guys hiding? <laughs> You're gonna have to die today. <laughs> <laughs> I miss what you said. Well, we're just talking about how spirits um, can read our thoughts, and when you're in the spirit world, uh, when we shed this body, our thoughts are like our hands. You know, our thoughts are the, the are how we we act on this, you know on this in the spirit world. Um, you create your thoughts in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. What you think is what you see. And and um, you know, I just I just kind of I guess I I don't know why I thought it was gonna be more shocking than it, than it was. It was, was uh, shocking, but I'm not gonna answer this question. <laughs> That's a simple thing. Well, nobody asked, nobody asked me. So, <laughs> what are you hiding? Oh, a lot. I need therapy. Same thing. <laughs> we are hiding a lot. But but this what you said brings me this. I can't help it, but think about when I leave this body. Where I'm gonna be at in a, in my in my thinking? Because that's all I am going to have, and it's gonna be like out there outstanding it makes you take like an honest look at like where where am i like now like mm -hmm. if i was to die today yeah <laughs> like what like i would go straight to the umbrella you know? <laughs> so do not, you not pass go you believe that <laughs> i think so i'd be like that <laughs> maybe you're in it now i'd be the governor right <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> You know, but, uh, and it kind of actually, for
for me, it gives me motivation to actually do things like, you know, I started studying the gossip, the gospel, not the gossip. <laughs> no, not <laughs> I'm that not one. Studying gossip, studying the gospel, and uh, <laughs> wow. and, and it's really like a good, um, a good like formula. But it's it's just like the things really? for spiritism, like a, a method of self improvement. You know, really, um, if you practice it. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, oh my you, gosh. you believe that we think more being incarnated or we will think more I don't know in the spirit world I don't know I just know that whatever happens to us after we leave this body the sensation that I was saying here if you read the book the Astro City or Nosola if you read the book you remember that Andre Luis said that he felt that he is he was hungry he felt a lot of things he was very hungry he felt his beard coming out he felt a lot of things and the reason why is that it is because we get so attached to the body that we create that in when we are out of the body so I'm wondering if people are creating cell phones because they're so addicted to cell phones. I'm thinking that when they get out of the body, they will create this cell phone. Because it's their reality. It's their ask, bubble. You gotta ask for a difference. Yeah. So it makes me think because I see I see a lot of people addicted to well, especially cell somebody who's like texting and driving and disincarnates like that they're probably gonna, they're probably gonna have it in their hand when they <laughs> yeah. I, it'd, it'd probably be like a bad dream for me I just wake up and have no service and like I don't know I can imagine going a lot of different ways uh, yeah but yeah I think it's I think it's important to, like when we when we talk about this and you start thinking like about um, also think. what's going on in my head yeah you know um, cause, um, somebody said the mind has no pride, you know, it'll think all kinds of things. So when, when I was learning, like trying to learn to practice meditation, they were trying to say like, don't beat yourself up cause your mind will start to have thoughts mm -hmm. and you need to just kind of like recognize that you're it's thinking and just come back to your breathing, you know, as you continue to, but they were like, well, your mind will just keep coming up with, with stuff to you know throw at you. Even when you're meditating, it'll be like, hey, look, I'm meditating. Isn't this great? You know, and like, it'll make meditation like the distraction itself. Uh, so, so, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of have, I'm curious, because you've seen mediums um, working with spirits, like doing the writing. They have to write like so fast, and they're just like writing like across a page, and then they get another page, and then, you know, because they just, they can't keep up with the speed of the thoughts. So, I mean, Whatever it is, it's like it's, it's incredible to kind of imagine it. It is like the analogy is like uh, the diving in the ocean. Like imagine, imagine right now our mobility, and imagine our mobility under the sea, with all the oxygen and the clothes and the gloves and the, and the mask, the the goggles. And we cannot see right, we cannot touch the same way we touch here, we cannot walk well, it is the same thing, it is the same thing. It's like here, for example, to, to give this thought, it, here is our spiritual body, we can do so many things, we can go walk much faster, we can run, we can do all sort of things, and when you are under the water in the deep sea, very limited very very limited it's so really hard to breathe too right so it's really hard to breathe I'm like a rock instead of a fish right <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's and it, it, this is a, a poor comparison it, it must be way more different than this one but I keep thinking this way it's like when we are here we forget our other body experiences we we lose a few uh, of our abilities otherwise we will be 
we will tend to do the same things over and over again like if I uh, used to be a pianist if if, uh, if I remember that I'm a pianist I will want to use the, that ability in every single incarnation and I won't be able to learn all the things so we lose a few abilities we, we forget about so many things and I've forgotten a lot of things in this incarnation right you know, I'm, I'm getting good at this <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is it is amazing and if if we don't start to study about this to talk about this and it's everywhere now it is really all over the world it is there is really people we hear a lot it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a, a slogan is the shift the awakening the spiritual era spirit era but it is there is something really people are not they want to they want to pay attention to their spiritual life it is amazing even if i went to university to learn positive psychology we are talking about developing the spiritual your spiritual life it has nothing to do with religion but it is in science in science where with this experience with yourself science call a spiritual experience it's not there yet the way that we talk about the spiritual but it's 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 a start it's something because they don't believe in it so like i was that. i was hoping we would get through like the next few down to this section but there's there's a lot, a lot of good stuff to talk about so it's a good time if you want to um, transition over to so we know. stopped on the 17th right so next week Basically, it's it's gonna be 18 18-ish okay we kind of talked about 18 a little bit today? But I, I don't know we'll, yeah we'll, we'll right around today, there what day is today what day is today you read because you told them 22 <laughs> well you got you got the reading right it, oh. No, this yeah, I have it in here. Yeah, yeah. No, so John said you're going to talk, uh, talk about the kind of spirit, the spirit for it. No, well, no, I'm not going to read that. I, I hand it over to my trusted colleague. Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, are you ready to begin? Well, yes. But first, let's invite everyone for the. Did you close already? No, I'm going to close. Oh, okay. Okay. No, before we forget, a little break, commercial break. <laughs> We're going to have a special guest from Brazil, Dr. Sergio Tyson. He is a, a cardiologist, a heart doctor, and he also, I'm, I'm not sure if his PhD is in, a, he calls it modern science, the quantum physics modern physics so it's very knowledgeable guy he will be here and he will be uh giving a talk in english on september the 6th it's a wednesday and it's gonna be h15 here in broward spirit society so you're all invited to come uh it's gonna be a very interesting talk the guy is very knowledgeable and it's very interesting i've seen um uh, his videos and he's really sweet, really nice, and at the same time, it's very knowledgeable. So he will be talking about. He was talking about what? Oh, there you go. There you have. Oh, uh, it's called um, F medicine, I guess. Modern science. Modern science, medicine, and the spirit. Spiritual. Uh, I don't remember. Sorry, I'm getting a little frozen up over here. Okay, no problem. But if you go to our Facebook page, Broward Spiritist Society, you will see that the banner has all the information you need with the time and date that Dr. Sergio Tyson will be um, giving uh, talks here in the Broward Spiritist Society. And if you have any questions, please get in touch with the Facebook page as well that someone will answer your question. Don't miss this opportunity. It's going to be someone um, very, he's very active in a spiritist movement in Brazil. How is this English? 
I, I don't know his English, but he speaks English. But I don't know yeah. his English. I don't know if he lived, you know, there are a lot of uh, people that lived uh, outside of Brazil for studies and we, we don't know, never know. Like, for example, Geraldinho that usually comes here, he's been coming to the States for more than 20 years. But he's never here on Wednesdays, so we Sometimes never he's, had him. He's, he's been, he's done uh, public speaking in English. In English? Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't yes. seen any. Mm -hmm. But I know that he speaks English because he's been working, uh, is he an engineer? I think he's an engineer. And he's been working with an American company, or mm -hmm. he, the, the company, because of his job, he's been coming here, I think, 26 years, something like that. Because your English is excellent, you know. It's Thank a, you very a, much. I don't think so, one, but I... The I, one who gave the lecture last Wednesday, his English, I couldn't understand a word he said. Oh, really? Oh, I, I oh his English time. was wonderful to me. Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There you have. So when is going to be? What is the? Court of Fair means Wednesday, 6th of September, 8.15 p.m. Medicine, Modern Physics, and Spiritism. There you go. So be there or be square. <laughs> I won't miss that. I won't miss that. Were you there Wednesday? I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No. Oh, I love that one. It was beautiful, that talk. I couldn't find it. Sorry, he didn't, he didn't, but his English was beautiful. Seriously. And fortunately, he had the book on the screen, so I right. was able to. Right, and you were able to read. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he's, he's good for you. He's going to be good. This one, uh, this one. Yeah. And we find that always we care of them. Oh, have you found? That's good. It's very understanding. Okay. So, Steve, can we start the spirits yeah. book? Or do you have anything else to say? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I don't know. Manny, do you want to read? Um, yeah, I'll read. Okay. So, okay, we will read. First, let me just... Uh, so. We are on the chapter three, creation and creations of living being. Okay. So all the easy stuff, right? <laughs> so hard. Let's see. It's the forty six. Okay. Um, so, like Cynthia said, the uh, chapter, uh, the section is um, creation of living beings, um, and this question that was posed. Um, is, are any living beings born spontaneously? And the answer, yes, but the original seeds already existed in a dormant state. You witness this phenomenon on a daily basis. For instance, the tissues of the human body and animals contain the germs of many parasites waiting for the fermentation needed for their life. It is a small world of microscopic beings that is dormant waiting to, to be created. That goes a little bit from what we were talking tonight, right, Manny? About the different worlds. How, um... Mm -hmm. I got really, I get really confused when, when science is, is trying to determine that uh, the life of our ancestors and the dates, and I get different sources. It seems to me correct me if I'm wrong, that they don't agree with the same thing, uh, like uh, not only the time, but where our ancestors, it seems that they, they keep finding, the other day, they found, they found a skeleton of, how old was it, Juan? Do you remember that, the article? It doesn't really matter. But what I'm saying is that we still we struggle with that question. Well, with our, our own history. Our, our own, own origin. Too many news. Like with our origin. And still, those questions are... 
even for those that are in that field of research mm -hmm. it seems that they don't get to agree with other researchers there are there are a lot of different am i no. am i getting do, do you get the same thing there's no integrity there's different opinions on the same subject i have to science, agree with you science is supposed to i have to agree eliminate that but then again science can be blind too yeah I agree with you, Joe. I see a lot of, of this unfair competition in other areas, not about that area, but, mm -hmm. you know, like, for example, now, I don't know if you know this, but it, not all scientists, serious scientists can go to Egypt and run their own research. It is something that is closed for a, a specific group of researchers you're talking about like archaeologists exploring yeah like I'm talking yeah the the and this is just an isolated case but then maybe this is everywhere and we don't know so if these people they want to manipulate that information about Egypt for example they can because it is just for a specific group a special group and there are many researchers that are not allowed to go in the same field of research. So that's how can we it's know the it's truth? True. Like, cause, I mean, I guess they consider like sacred, like mm -hmm. the old Egyptian and all that, all that whole history. So I guess you have to be like invited, or like you know, mm. to study. I'm, I'm not saying that it's right. I know, but I don't but, think I mean, that's a question. They, it's kind of how they how they view it. You know yeah. what I mean? It could be. It could be. I just think that it's a it's a matter of power. That's 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 the impression I get, because there are right. this is a hot yeah. spot and a lot of people want to go there. They simply these days, it's they're not allowed. Not everyone can go and oh let me go to research here. No, simply they're mm -hmm. closed to the world. Just like Japan did. Information is knowledge. And if you can control information, then yeah. the power. And They're closed to the world and not accessible. And I, what, what I ask myself is, in how many other areas in other fields of research we are doing the same thing? Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. We were talking about earlier about uh, you know you you know. Uh, is making a joke about you know what, what are you guys hiding about you know like what what have you done in your past you know but it's like you know we're all we're all we're all human and and you know we all we all think that we have things that we can't you know share you know like we're all we're all deep down we're all ashamed of something that we've done in our past or you know some something that we've done in our past that we, we're not comfortable sharing but it's the same thing with um with information too it's and it's like you said like with power like you know all these things are, are things that have happened but then they don't for whatever reason to keep their power to keep their religion to keep their people you know to keep their country they they don't share these things with other people because then that would be that'd be their own demise that's how they see it and it's unfortunate but this is just how how it's been you know over and over again and it's still right it still it still happens yeah it still happens and it's it's, it's still we are concentrating our energy and attention to the the material stuff the money the power the titles and we 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 still don't don't enhance our thinking our understanding of life that we are all connected we are all one family and we all deserve to evolve and if there are still people manipulating information, we cannot move forward. We will have to wait because we are we are kind of we are not, but we are kind of hostage in the yeah. hands of those that got the information and got the power to decide. I release and I don't release this information. What I absolutely. But um, in, in some spiritist books, like it says, um, 
like the you know the pro everything is always progressing forward even even if slowly so these these people can only you know try to obstruct that progress only yeah. so much until you know yeah until yeah you know, yeah remember that it gives way years ago before internet um we we relied on just a, a few sources for example for things that were uh, happening in the sky and today because of the technology and internet there are a lot of people that do not own a degree or anything and they are as good as other researchers that are getting paid yeah. so things will move regardless yeah. these guys want it or not the yeah. truth will come out sure but to me it's important to be aware that um, the period for which people can hold um, that progress it could be years, it could be hundreds of years or it could be thousands of years so yes you're right and um, there's no other way it, you know, everybody will end up <clears throat> um, developing and, and kind of moving forward and not being able to block that progress mm -hmm. um, but it could be a long time and but for me it's important to know that uh, you know not to get desperate or not to uh, fall in despair or disbelief because I don't see with the eyes of um, the scale of uh, one incarnation I don't see that progress or I feel that there's no way that uh, I'm gonna see that progress in the world uh, and it's easy to get desperate and, and fall in disbelief um, but that's just a matter of scale mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah but for example today if we have a just to compare what you're saying if we have a, a nuclear war and we have enough weapon to destroy the whole planet mm -hmm. yeah. if we destroy the whole planet of course we are not going to stop evolving because we lose our bodies but our spirits remain mm -hmm. and of course we will have another another home to go I don't know about Steve but we will all do I'll see you in a row. I have a plan. I'll see you in a row. <laughs> but uh, it will be, and, and this already happened because we know we've read the other books, but uh, it is one group that it is doing something to slow down the progress because it, it is possible that this, this could happen. It is possible. It's not a crazy story from a book or a novel. Some crazy guy in in here in the United States and North Korea and other countries too. It is possible. So well, that makes us think that that's why we need to learn about of what's going on in here with our human being because if we don't get out of the cycle of materialism we will keep we will keep going towards power domination you know I wanted to say too is that like just this weekend somebody showed me a, a documentary about something happening in Virginia you know recently you know and, and um, my after like studying spiritism for a couple years now my perspective of it all is like changing them it like i don't like what's happening <laughs> you know but it's like when i see it it says seeing like i mean it's hard to like put a label on it, but it says seeing like hatred so much i see it as like ignorance and and it, this is kind of how it's coming out is this like hatred and it's just but the like the level of ignorance is like so sickening and it's like what do you do like like 
<laughs> you know, and, and and what people are preaching is like, oh, we need to kill these people, we need to do that and do this. I'm like, we need to educate them, you know. But I can't say like how to do it, you know. I mean, I'm not that advanced, but I, I just like hope, <laughs> you know, that these people find like education. And, and as a spirit, as we know, like the law of progress, like they'll get it one way or get it another way, you mm -hmm. know, in this mm -hmm. lifetime or another mm -hmm. lifetime or in between yeah. lifetimes. Um, I don't know what you. I'd like to see it go faster. <laughs> I, I don't know what you guys think, but one of my ideas is if we. Uh, if we study about our spiritual life, we will help, I know this, we will help to raise the vibration and frequency of this planet. The more people uh, vibrate differently, feels differently, uh, different than, than hate, different than, than the power, we can we can neutralize if we had enough people we can neutralize and this there has was, been shown in like the a, studies there was like a white supremacy protest going on on yeah, the yeah, side yeah. of the street and there was like an anti-fascism protest on the other side of the street and they just started fighting right. and i'm like what are you gonna get like just by fighting exactly you know because i was just like i was like am i just not like brave enough to go fight with white supremacists <laughs> or or is that just not the way to to, to solve the problem? You're, you know? you're more involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. You know, yes, I, I don't know. It's just I don't know. I don't know how you like get yeah. to that. But, but you're absolutely right. We would just you get can, out you of can't this fight cycle. Fire with fire. No, we would just get out of this cycle, getting rid of ignorance. That's the only way. This this they just they are not mean. They're just ignorant what is ignorance ignorance and the way that i'm saying here is the lack of knowledge it's almost willful though like we have program language knowledge knowledge experience morality experience it has a lot of things in it but once you don't know you suffer for example if I am addicted to something and I don't know that I can live without that I will suffer a lot I will suffer so that experience that lack of that experience the lack of that knowledge will make me suffer and it's not that I mean it is not that I that I can't it's just that I don't know some people they don't really know I if if we take a closer look there are people that they yes they do because they still feel good about doing that thing that it's not so positive but there are a lot of people that are really they don't know they don't get it they don't understand they don't grasp the idea what they understand it that is the only way that negative way is the way it is unbelievable it, it was hard for me to to believe to accept it's not to believe to accept that but i've seen it with my own eyes with people that are close to me that i thought they were doing on purpose certain things it's like i can't believe this must be doing this on purpose knowing that you have done this one thing once twice three times and you see a loved one doing like the fourth time and if you pay close attention you will see that that person it's doing like it's automatically it's like i would say innocently is doing the the wrong thing <laughs> But even, even though you can clearly see that it was like bad and exactly. like them, they have they don't know blind from it. They don't know. Actually, they know they have forgotten. <clears throat> and ignorance, yeah. for me, ignorance is ignoring the truth. The truth is sitting inside of all of us. We all right. Have, we Absolutely. Have, we all have a conscience. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. I agree. Yes. Yes. Because of the culture, we will forget it. So, to me, ignorance is ignoring the truth which we have forgotten. Yeah, this is another word, same so thing. I, I, I mean, I'm using words to, to, to describe what... Uh, Absolutely, I agree with you. But 
but it's ignoring yeah. the truth. And the truth is so, I think it's, it's built in. Okay, we can't, we're born with the truth. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, not, yeah, he's right. Ignoring the truth, but also claiming that you know what you, that you, what you don't know. Right. One thing is knowledge, and the other thing is conscience. So, I have knowledge of a lot of things. I've read a lot of books and spiritism and the spiritualism. Does it mean that I am conscious? That I grasp the idea? That I, 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 I feel uh, within me? No. Obviously. I need to experience. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> I need to experience in order to understand the lesson. But I know a lot of things theoretically speaking but not consciously conscience is when you say I am not gonna do this because I know that this is not good for me this is not good for me one thing is a theory so many things that we do we know it's not good for us right raise your hand if you relate <laughs> anyway but you know so many things we we do we do and it was I know I know I know it feels good it feels good in that moment <laughs> <laughs> but if we were conscious yeah. if we had hit our conscience we would say no 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 and we have we already have so many things a long list of things that even if someone the, the best person in the world comes and say take this and you, we already know we are we, we've reached the, this level of awareness we go no thank you very much no 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 simply no right you can yeah. Yeah. but not everything right <laughs> <laughs> and you. We're ready for that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a good time I can um, shut down the Yes, broadcast? please. Yeah. So I'm just going to say thank you for everybody and um, join us next week. And don't forget about our announcements. I'm going to display it on the screen for a minute. All right. Ciao, k -Rigos. What? What? I can't say that. You are too fancy.